Welcome everybody to the online seminar series um, Machine Learning Needs uh, Mathematical Optimization. To have, today we have the great pleasure of having uh, Antonio Frangioni uh, from uh, Universidad, uh, Universidad di Pisa, um, Departamento di Informatica. He is a full professor uh, there and his uh, uh, main research interest is uh, large-scale uh, optimization. He uh, uses uh, uh, both continuous optimization and combinatorial optimization to address uh, these problems. Uh, he um, has worked uh, in many fields of application, including energy, transportation, and telecommunication. But he also shares interest in other areas, such as artificial intelligence, and machine learning and he studies uh, the role of mathematical optimization over there so it's really at the core of uh, this um, online seminar series antonio has published uh, with uh, uh, many co-authors in top journals in the field such as management science uh, mathematics of operations research science journal of optimization and etc he is involved in many um, uh, uh, research projects funded uh, uh, nationally, but also European uh, um, activities, such as uh, the Horizon 2020 Marie Curie uh, Training Network MINOA and uh, the former Cost Action Mathematical Optimization in the Decision Support Systems for Efficient and Robust Optimization Energy Networks. Um, we are extremely pleased uh, to have you here, uh, Antonio, and the floor is yours. As I said, 45 minutes, it's, uh, and then we leave some time for questions. If the audience has a very urgent question, please uh, put it in the chat, and then I will read it to, to Antonio. Thank you very much, uh, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Dolores and Emilio, for uh, thinking about inviting me. Uh, it's it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, I like, I mean, I, I've always liked to, you know, be uh, in the middle between different fields, and I mean, uh, even even much longer, much before that, uh, machine learning came back in, uh, in in shape. I was uh, sort of fascinated by uh, by the field. Uh, and I mean, lately you cannot basically uh, go anywhere without uh, saying something about uh, machine learning. And so it was, uh, I think, the right time to try to recover some of my former uh, ideas. And this uh, particular uh, research I will be speaking of is actually the thesis of Gabriele Yomazzo, who is going to present uh, another part basically of this talk. I would say the real part of this talk with the real uh, results later on uh, in this in this seminar, but also with my uh, good friends uh, Claudia Ambrosio and Leo Liberti uh, at uh, Ecole Polytechnique. Uh, so I mean, uh, th this has been, um, I think, uh, a nice experience <coughs> uh, for me, and I'm uh, happy to try to share that with you. Uh, so I mean, uh, I will try to to keep the, <coughs> uh, the, the the talk short. So first of all, why? Huh? Uh, we, we really wanted to try to solve this problem and then uh, what problem uh, we try to solve, uh, which I think it's an unsolvable problem in theory. So, I mean, everything you do is, is good because uh, the, the final, uh, the final uh, object is, is not really reachable, so you can just approximate that uh, and this is what we are trying to do. Uh, and I mean, uh, I, I will argue, and I hope you will agree, that uh, putting together machine learning and mathematical optimization is the right way or possibly the only way to go uh, about solving this problem. Uh, and while the, the main idea uh, is reasonably simple, in fact, uh, the implementation is not. Uh, and this is where poor Gabriele has sweat uh, a lot in his uh, last three years together with us, and uh, we did get some results, uh, some of which I will uh, give a, you a brief glimpse of uh, to try to, uh, to share the fact that the ID might work, and Gabriele will tell you more <clears throat> next time. Okay, so the motivation is that uh, optimization is hard. 
uh, save, of course, the, the remote possibility that someone uh, would prove that P is equal uh, to NP, which would be a real shock to all of us. Uh, all problems that we need to solve are difficult. Uh, and there is a, a sort of strange chasm in the theory, uh, because basically the theory tells you that all NP hard problems are equally difficult. Uh, but in fact, you, you know by experience that, that problems are difficult because different, uh, di different aspects of the problems, of different problems are difficult. Uh, so it's, uh, it might be extremely difficult to find any feasible solution, or you may have plenty of solutions, but finding the optimal one can be extremely hard. Uh, and or uh, in order to solve the problem, you will need to solve some, uh, some problem that would be easy where it's not so dramatically large. Uh, or the problem can have some specifically nasty components, functions, or, or parts that are uh, in themselves hard to compute. Uh, so the, I think the, the NP completeness or NP hardness story is that however you go about solving difficult problem, you will find, you will hit a wall sooner or later, uh, but you typically hit different walls depending when, when you arrive from different directions. And so in order to be able to do anything, uh, you will, basically the idea is you cannot uh, just uh, hope that one uh, solution approach uh, will always work. Huh? So you will have to look at your particular problem and see where your particular problem is hard to solve and do something for your particular problem. <clears throat> this is true basically for all different, for all difficult problems, but uh, in particular, uh, general purpose solvers, that are the ones that we are sort of interested in here, uh, are particularly uh, troubled by this because basically if you need to solve some very large uh, class like mixed integer linear, or even, even worse, mixed integer nonlinear programs, uh, then uh, in order to, to make something that solve any of these guys, or at least tries to, you really have to put in there ma very many different things. And you know, uh, uh, bounding techniques and uh, uh, relaxations and column generation and heuristic preprocessing reformulation. <clears throat> Every uh, working algorithm for a large class optimization problem is really many algorithms that have to talk to each other and where you have to find lots of trade offs uh, between how much you spend on this part and on that part, and if you do this part in this way or that way. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I am particularly interested in uh, spe especially large and nasty problems that require especially large and nasty uh, solvers for which I have been developing uh, a system that is pointed right there, but the system is not the story of today, so uh, I will avoid to tell you anything more. <clears throat> today is more about uh, standard, let's say, run-of-the-mill general purpose mathematical optimization solvers. Uh, and the point is that any good solver has very many algorithmic parameters. And we all know uh, that when uh, your specific class of problems comes to you uh, from reality uh, and you have to, re to really try to solve them, uh, typically you have to, be, to, to start and do some parameter tuning, uh, which is crucial for the problem to be solved in reasonable time, if this is at all possible. Uh, so this is something that we might relish in that it's uh, one of the reasons why we as optimization experts might be in demand. But the truth is that it's a hard, uh, mostly manual process that is mostly trial and error, uh, whereby you try to infer something by looking at some uh, solver logs and, and knowing something about how the solver, what the solver is doing. Uh, which for some solvers you only know something but not the whole story. <clears throat> uh, and uh, you have to look at your specific uh, solver and this has to be uh, specifically, let's say, instance by instance or at least, uh, I mean, specific class of problems by specific class of problems uh, because uh, you can just say I will have, uh, I have the optimal uh, parameters for every milk because no such thing exists. Okay. <clears throat> And we know. Uh, so basically what we have here is a process whereby we have, and I mean, it's, it's a plain to see that this is basically a meta optimization problem. And this is the way we will, uh, we will put it. 
okay, whereby uh, in order to solve the optimization problem, you have to solve another optimization problem before whose parameter, whose variables, algorithmic parameters of your solver, and these are many. <clears throat> and typically, while we use our sophisticated mathematical optimization techniques for the solution process, uh, for the second uh, solution process, we only use uh, experience uh, and, well, a little bit of support, but not much <clears throat> uh, from, from the tools to do the first thing. Uh, and so basically there's a scope here, I would say, to automatize uh, this experience-based process. And I mean, I think that most of you would agree that this is one of the places where machine learning really, uh, really shines. So, I mean, uh, it, it basically shouldn't be anyone surprised that <clears throat> uh, we should, uh, we could try to use machine learning uh, to do parameter optimization. Okay, so uh, formally speaking, just to <clears throat> put some things on the table, uh, the algorithm configuration problem has been known since 30 years or more, I would say. I mean, defined since 30 years or more. Uh, and formally speaking, you have uh, some algorithm for some problem, uh, and the problem is typically an infinite set of different instances. <clears throat> and you have a configuration for this algorithm, which is a finite vector of parameters. Uh, but what will be important in all this talk is that this is finite, but not small. Uh, so you have many parameters. <clears throat> and these parameters define a set of feasible parameter configuration, which is at least combinatorial in the set of parameters. <clears throat> so it's typically very large. <clears throat> and I mean, uh, you can also, it can also be infinite because some parameters might be continuous <clears throat> and also have logic relationships between parameter uh, of the kind. Uh, if I'm using uh, the, the barrier method, then I could use either primal or dual uh, crossover. But if I'm not using the barrier method, this does not, does not make, make sense. Okay, <clears throat> so there is uh, some uh, logic in the choices that you can reasonably take about your algorithmic parameters. And this choice is one of the reasons why we uh, we basically went for the direction <clears throat> we took, as I will tell you. Then you have a performance function uh, that, that measures the efficiency of the process. Uh, and this is also non-trivial. Uh, you have to take all the efficiency of your process and <clears throat> uh, try to come up with a single number that describes how good this is. Uh, we will take some shortcuts, but even with the shortcuts that we have taken, you will see this is not completely uh, this is not completely obvious. <clears throat> so the, the choice of the performance function has uh, is, is uh, might have to be discussed, um, or there could be uh, some ideas like I have multiple performance functions, which could also be possible, <clears throat> but creates other complications. So we will stick with one performance function. And I mean the algorithm configuration problem is basically uh, it's very simple. Once you get any instance of your problem, uh, fixed instance uh, that you want to solve quickly, uh, find uh, the optimal configuration and, of course, uh, hopefully a good configuration that provides uh, the solution with optimal performances. Uh, and it's clearly, as I said, a meta-optimization problem where the configurations are <coughs> your variables. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, sometimes this problem is called the algorithm selection problem. Uh, typically imagining that you have a portfolio of algorithms and each algorithm is a configuration. Um, well, I mean, typically this means that your, your set of configuration is not very large, whereas our one is. Um, so I, I am convinced that this problem is, is extremely hard uh, and decidable probably <clears throat> in, in this very general formulation. And uh, although we look at it uh, in terms of mathematical optimization problems, it's clear uh, that basically what you are trying to do uh, shed, have, share a lot of similarities with other things. Uh, Hyperparameter tuning in machine learning is clearly one. Uh, but also, uh, my idea is uh, <clears throat> all the time you have to take decisions basi based only on some uh, models, on some idea of uh, what will happen. Uh, that you have constructed painfully out of past experience. <clears throat> uh, whatever we do here can clearly be sold within, uh, in, in, this kind of, in this kind of treatment. 
Okay. Uh, so how do you, what, what do you want to do? What you want to construct is basically a function, a recommender, <clears throat> and the function is something that given uh, at the instance uh, tells you back the configuration of the instance. Okay. <clears throat> and now this function is clearly complicated to construct, okay, because basically uh, in order to do that, uh, when the, the, when, even if the, the new instance is fixed, in theory, you have to look to, to the entire configuration space. And the entire configuration space is large. Uh, and not only that, uh, uh, typically looking at one point of the configuration space would require running the algorithm. Uh, but running the algorithm for us really is a black box. Uh, <clears throat> and I mean, you typically cannot run the algorithm many times and then say, OK, this was the faster one, so take, take that one, because uh, this defies the purpose of the fact that I want the solution quickly. Uh, even assuming that you can do that, uh, because <clears throat> if you think, again, uh, personalized medical treatment, uh, if you're given the wrong medicine to the patient and the patient has died, uh, this is not something you can undo uh, and say, oh, well, uh, th th that was a bad, a bad step. I would do better next time. Okay. <clears throat> um, so clearly what you have to do uh, is you have to construct a model uh, that encodes some knowledge about the <clears throat> your performance function and try to use the model to to help you solving this problem. Uh, I mean, for algorithms, we all know uh, complexity theory, uh, but we all know also know that worst case complexity theory is most of the time uh, hardly any useful. And average case complexity theory, uh, even if it works, uh, is well, uh, it doesn't work too much either, and it's it's also much more complicated to get. <clears throat> so uh, clearly, the, the the way out for this is a data driven approach. So do experiments, uh, uh, run a learning phase uh, uh, on a training set of pairs, which is the important part, uh, instances configuration, uh, and out of this construct a model uh, that uh, can then be used uh, for the recommender. Uh, and also let me mention quickly uh, that once you have constructed the model, uh, if you have time to do uh, more learning, uh, you can use the model itself, <clears throat> and this is typically done uh, to to help you guiding in the exploration of the uh, of the configuration space. Uh, so a very <clears throat> uh, quick view of the thing. Uh, so you have a learning process that gives you a model uh, out of which, uh, when the instance comes <clears throat> uh, in the recommendation phase, you can get the uh, you can get an answer, uh, and if you have time, uh, and there will be some sort of uh, of budget of effort here that I don't want to discuss, but it's an important <coughs> subject. Uh, you may also get back, uh, uh, having gotten some more. Once you run the, having gotten some more uh, information, you can improve your model <coughs> and do this this kind of uh, this kind of play. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, there is, uh, as you can really imagine and know, uh, a lot of, of literature <clears throat> about how things, how this kind of things are done. Uh, and there are many different approaches <clears throat> depending on several things, uh, like what the model is and so how the recommender works. Uh, whether you really want to work, you really want to work instance by instance, or as in many cases, uh, you really choose, try to choose a configuration that works reasonably in all cases, so an upper problem thing. <clears throat> and also uh, whether uh, this um, recommendation phase is done once at the beginning of the algorithm and never uh, thereafter, uh, or uh, uh, you can repeat it at different stages of your algorithm, uh, incorporating dynamical information of the, uh, during the solution process. And let me mention we are in an offline approach, uh, but each time you have an offline approach done, uh, you can really think of using it uh, as the basis for an online one. Uh, and so while I won't discuss it, I also uh, see this as, as a, a clear possibility, <clears throat> provided of course that the trade-off between uh, the time it takes you to do the recommendation and the benefit that you get uh, is, uh, is working, which is absolutely not obvious. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, I would say basically uh, three types of recommenders uh, that you find in the literature, uh, plus uh, plus some special cases or strange mixes. 
Uh, one is where you have a, a process that actually recommend a configuration. Okay, and this is something that machine learning uh, would typically do for you, uh, in particular things like neural network <coughs> or the like. Uh, um, uh, a problem in this uh, is that um, not always machine learning is, is good at managing the combinatorial constraints that we have on the uh, on our space of configurations. <clears throat> so our favorite approach, let me tell you immediately, uh, is the, the one where we use machine learning to just compute an approximation of performance function. <clears throat> and once you have computed the approximation, uh, our way of choosing the best configuration is just that of optimizing over this approximation, hoping that this approximation uh, will uh, give us relevant information uh, to approximate <clears throat> the other thing. Huh? There are other ways. Huh? Uh, typically, one thing that is done is, uh, is to uh, find some set of representative instances for which you find uh, good configurations in some, in some way. <clears throat> uh, and then basically try to find uh, which of these representative instances is closer uh, to your configuration, <clears throat> to, to your current instance, uh, and use the best uh, the best configuration for this representative as the best configuration for your instance. Uh, and there are also <coughs> uh, some, some things in the middle, uh, <coughs> some things in the middle that I don't really want to, to discuss. And at the end of the slides, there is all this literature if you are, <coughs> if you are interested. Huh? Uh, and basically, huh? uh, what, I, what I would like to show huh, is that uh, I, predictably most of the work huh, is based on offline uh, per problem uh, uh, per problem approaches, whereby you try to find one uh, good configuration, <clears throat> and that's it. Huh? Uh, but uh, there is also work uh, comprised us arts uh, on the uh, per instance uh, version, <clears throat> and we will do per instance. Huh? Uh, so how how uh, do wh what do we do? How we do it work? Huh? <clears throat> so of course we uh we make uh some assumptions uh, and i will list you three assumptions here mm -hmm. um, the one is that we can express in a way that is uh, reasonable for basically any general purpose optimization solver uh, <clears throat> the uh, constraints over the set of configurations uh, so let's say our configuration are just uh, represented by some long binary vector with some linear constraint on it. Uh, then uh, if, if we would have uh, continuous or general integer const, uh, uh, parameters, that this, this would be achievable. Uh, almost all of the things I'll tell you, but not exactly all, <coughs> uh, will, will not uh, change a lot if this happens. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that you have to decide on a performance function. And what we did for good reasons, given the kind of problem that <coughs> we wanted to solve, uh, is to fix a time limit uh, and optimize the gap. Uh, but as you will see, uh, this also requires to do some uh, shenanigans at the, at the time, uh, and because this happens to us, uh, when actually you're not able to solve to get any solution. <coughs> uh, and this, this, you will see, has, um, has an impact. Uh, the um, the assumption I'm mostly worried about uh, is that you know you know a good encoding uh, of the of your instance in a finite set of features, real numbers, uh, and this is I think uh, the most complicated part uh, <clears throat> that we really are not um, I mean really trying to solve. We assumed we we did that in a reasonable way for our problem. Uh, and I mean, and we hope that there will be ways <clears throat> to do this in observable ways for general problems, but I'm not really sure I know <clears throat> uh, a way that is really convincing uh, for doing this. Uh, so this, at least this uh, might remain a manual part of the process for, for a long time. Uh, but of course, if any of you know some uh, promising approach
presentation has uh, um, gathered a lot of uh, um, a big audience and, and many questions. So thank you so much for uh, coming today and uh, thank you for um, um, yeah, offering uh, yet another presentation next week through uh, your uh, uh, student, Gabriele. We hope to see you soon and uh, to the rest of the audience, uh, maybe see you next week at the Young Online Seminar Series, uh, Machine Learning Needs uh, Mathematical Optimization with uh, three uh, uh, interesting uh, speakers uh, next week. Thank you all. Thank you everyone, goodbye. Thank you, Antonio, great talk. Yeah, Thank marvelous, you. yeah, yeah. I have enjoyed a lot. It's a, uh, it's a